All right, this is the September Town of Rotten Conservation Commission meeting. Um, Chris Lofgren from the Office of Planning and Development Services. Larry Dunn is the chairman and Bray Rafferty is the vice chairman. Um, this meeting is conducted via Zoom. Um, if there are any attendees in the audience who would like to speak, you can do so during the public communications portion of the agenda. Um, to do to be acknowledged, you can just raise your hand and um, and I will uh, permit you to talk and um, communicate with that item. And with that, Larry, you can start the, the meeting. Yes, I see there's, Michelle in there. I was gonna say Michelle's out as an attendee. Yep, Michelle's um, being through. Yeah. There she is. And we have Eugenia and Sue out there as attendees as well. <laughs> Hey, Michelle. <clears throat> so you're going to bring in the other two? Uh, well, during public communications, you, you can start the meeting and take the role, Mr. Chairman. All right. Uh, all right. So first item is the uh, roll call. Larry Dunn, Chair. We'll go around the horn here. Uh, Karen, upper right. Karen Scapino, member. Bray. Bray Rafferty, Vice Chair. Ann. Ann Schmidt, member. Bob. Uh, Tom Olson, member. Michelle. Michelle Fitzpatrick, secretary. And Christine sent a note that she uh, is traveling and would not be able to attend. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so uh, the next item uh, is, uh, let's see. Can the attendees hear us, Bruce? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, so the next item of business is the approval of meetings, of minutes, excuse me. Uh, so that was published out there. Uh, let's see. So, uh, Tom? I move we accept the minutes as uh, presented. I'll second. All right. I second it. All right, that, that's been seconded twice, actually. Uh, all right, discussion. Any comments or updates that anyone has seen? Anne? Um, I just noticed a double word in the report of the chairman. Larry Dunn asked if there was there a town, so the second there can go. That's the only thing I noticed. Okay. Ooh. There was there. If there was there. Huh. <laughs> All right, I saw, I read that. I'm, all right. <laughs> uh, other comments. All right. Uh, so the let's put it to a uh, a vote with the uh, amendment as stated with the uh, changes mentioned. Uh, all in favor, raise your hands. All right, that's all in favor, unanimous. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six to six ought. Or six nil since we got soccer going on over there and overseas. All right, so the next item of business is um, public communications. So we do have uh, several members of the public out there. Uh, so I know I do know Eugenia sent a letter uh, so why don't we start with her? Hello? You have the floor, Eugenia. Okay. Um, well, um, so the, the reason that we're here today is because of the fact that um, the King property naming process has, has been a, a sort of a, a much more convoluted process than we were anticipating. And um, as a result of that, you have been asked to come in and, and opine on the meaning of, of the words nature preserve. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of background to that, uh, that, that we had originally we didn't even know that there was such a thing as a parks and rec uh, commission that decides on the naming of, of these parks in the town of Broughton. And uh, when, when we had at first proposed a name having to do, you know, having including the words Birch Plain Creek, 
uh, they rejected that and they proposed, which we wholeheartedly supported, uh, turning it over to the Mackinac Pequot Tribal Council and having them select a name for the property, which they did, and they and they decided to call it Sassicus. But that's all it was, and so we then suggested to Mark Berry that it be called Sassicus Nature Preserve, and so. Um, when the Parks and Recreation Commission uh, saw that as Sassicus Nature Preserve, then they became concerned about what the meaning of nature preserve was. And so they said, this needs to go to the Conservation Commission so that they can decide on uh, what, what this means. And in the meantime, uh, Larry and I have been in touch back and forth a number of times on, on this issue and, and, and how it's defined. And um, I just wanted to, to mention that uh, uh, it seems a good definition of nature preserve is that for more than any other reason, nature preserves are set aside to protect the plants, animals, and natural communities which are found on them. And here is where I think they're concerned is what then can people, the public do on the property? And what it, what it says is that quote, visitation is allowed to the extent that the features can tolerate it without deterioration. And so when GCA volunteered to, to uh, put in a, um, a trail on the property, we did so keeping in mind that we, we didn't want to be taking, we wanted to take people close to features that we wanted them to be close to and aware of, and then keep them away from other features that needed protecting. And um, so today I contacted Eric Hammerling, who is the director of um, the Connecticut Parks, um, Connecticut, what is it called? Connecticut Forest and Park. And Eric Hammerling, who is absolutely terrific, I asked him, do you think that there's anything to be concerned about having to do with this, this nature preserve um, designation? And he said, quote, I don't think it's a problem for this property to be called a nature preserve and designated as such by the town. And then he says, assuming that in capital letters, it is intended to be managed in furtherance of the perception of what a preserve is. And he said that, that the definition I provided him with, which is the one I just read to you, uh, would, be, would be that definition. He said, obviously, if there are inconsistencies between the name and how it's managed, that could cause some issues, anger in the future. So, that, so that's probably the most important thing uh, to be thinking about uh, with, with regard to that. And then he proposed that at the state level, they have a, a, um, a different designation um, called a natural area, a natural area. And that, and then that is defined in the Connecticut uh, sta general statutes. And frankly, after reading through the Connecticut statu statutes on that definition, it's almost identical to the one that I just read to you. But you have a link because I sent it to Larry, uh, so that you can go into that and look into this in in more detail about about what the options are. They also say that a management plan may permit recreational activities activities which do not adversely impact the protected resources of the natural area preserved. And now Sue is going to talk with you about the, what those, uh, what those areas that need preservation are. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. All right, thank you. Uh, could you then, I guess, open the mic for Sue? <clears throat> Okay, I hope you can hear me. Yes. <clears throat> Super. Um, yeah, thanks, Eugenia. It's a great introduction. Um, I think a lot of you know the King property, um, as it's been called, um, has been on the list of properties important to conserve for, uh, I guess, decades, long time. It's always been up there. And there's really good reasons for that, too. And that ties into why Nature Preserve, um, I think, is a, is a pretty good uh, description of it. Um, 
I think a lot of you know Birch Plain Creek goes through there. And anytime you have that kind of, um, it's, it's a pretty um, healthy stream. It's not just a little trickle type of stream. Um, it's also helping a lot of the, um, the birds and everything else that live close to there. Sorry, I'm turning my printer off, it's making noise. Um, in addition to that, <clears throat> it's got the um, granite cliffs in there and you've got quite a variety of very important um, you know, plant species on there. Um, but I think it's important to, notice to, to note too that by the tracks, you've actually got an Atlantic white cedar forest, which is a uh, Connecticut critical habitat and that's all part of the property. Um, it's one of those uh, environments and it's about six acres, but it's, it's one that has trees and flora and fauna otherwise that really help um, endangered type of species. Some, there's dragonflies that you will only find in that sort of environment as well as other sorts of insects, but it's more than that. There's also a lot of plants that um, you would find them there and you would be very unlikely to find them anywhere else. So that's all part of it too. Um, I think what surprised me was how many birds I saw when we were there making the trails and getting the property ready and everything. And so <clears throat> I thought, well, one of the best places to see what's there, because I'm really not a birder. I know some birds, but not a birder. Um, I looked at the Cornell eBird list for that area, which is on Pequonic Hill Road, um, the central point of it. And the list is, I, I have to say, it's one of the best lists I've ever seen, only because it's got um, endangered species on it, Sharpshin hawk, Northern Harrier, that have been sighted there by birders. It's got threatened species like the peregrine falcon and the bald eagle. Um, it's a rare time, you know, when you're there that you don't see some birds you don't normally see other places, which is really nice. Certainly a lot of osprey and stuff use the wetlands and that whole lot of trees to stop by in and all. Uh, and the property includes, besides the stream and everything, as you probably know, on the uh, southeast corner of it, there's a nice pond. So this mix of habitats um, with food, water, shelter, um, has made it real, a really important stopover for um, obviously an end living place for a lot of uh, avian type species that you don't normally see. So um, I think in designing the trail, um, it wasn't just to make a note, um, we definitely uh, kept away from sensitive areas. I don't think there's too many people that really want to trail through a, a swamp that I know of. Um, you would have to do a very long bog bridge or something. It's not the easiest. Um, but we have it so that you can see it. And you can see the beautiful evergreen trees sticking up there towards as you look north. Um, and we also kept away from other sensitive areas as well as we couldn't really go up, uh, and we didn't want to go up close to school either. So it kept a nice buffer there. So, and away from some of the other things on the property. So um, there is also talking about future possibilities for natural things. There's a quite a large um, like open flat area. If, when you drive up to um, Kolmaski School on the left there, if you look over, um, there's quite an open area. <clears throat> and so um, the intent there is to continue to encourage native plants and make it as much of a pollinator garden type as possible. Um, the property already has some very excellent species, um, some unusual dogwood trees, winterberry, uh, it has remnant pitch pine, um, it has American chestnut, some uh, small, smaller trees that have come up there too. So it's got a good variety of things already. And if you go to the power line corridor, which is another um, good habitat often for birds, um, if you go to the southern end of it, you won't believe um, all the Joe Pie and the Golden Wad and this whole field of things is quite rich. So anyway, I, I know I sound like a real estate agent here, but I um, <laughs> just want you, I look at, a, as you know, I look at a lot of uh, open space properties and I think this one really ranks up there. It would, uh, it would get an open space grant in a heartbeat. And I think the town's been very fortunate that they made the decision to uh, swap it for the Merritt property for the middle school. So, but I welcome any questions or anything, as I'm sure does Eugenia. Mm -hmm. 
All right, thank you. Um, yeah, so you know, I did a little research, and and uh, I think Tom did a little research because it does uh, cross foot to the stewardship plan we have for this area. Um, so since the part of our charter and responsibility is to provide advice and counsel to the town, uh, clearly this request you know falls in that. Uh, realm of responsibility. So I uh, have no problems bringing that before the commission, which we will do tonight. Uh, and uh, since you asked for us to opine upon it, um, the best opiner, uh, Tom, uh, might, might, we might start there. Um, so would you share your uh, research that you've done? Sure. Uh, I noticed that it wasn't an item of business per se, but I'll look at it as essentially the uh, open space plan exp uh, explanation and a little bit because we we have uh, already approved the Birch uh, Creek uh, uh, stewardship plan, which this is this particular parcel is included. So what I did is I went off and, and took a look at, you know, what's the real difference between a, uh, uh, a preserve and how does that, uh, in, is it in line with the, uh, the conservation easement that we have, that the state of Connecticut holds on this piece of property or this portion of the piece of the parcel. You have to recognize that uh, the Kalinowski School parcel is 100 acres and of which 37 of the acres have been carved out to set up this uh, uh, restricted area that's on a conservation easement, a conservation and recreation, excuse me, easement with the state of Connecticut. Uh, and so to some degree, I, you know, in my first uh, thought would have been to say, oh, this should be the Sackasas conservation area because we have a conservation easement on it rather than a uh, preserve, which is typically uh, looked at as you're trying to preserve a specific site, a historical, uh, per, uh, from a historical perspective. And I don't know of anything uh, from a historical perspective on this. But so then I went back and said, well, are there any other nature preserves in the town already? And there is, it's the Mortimer Wright uh, Preserve, which was established uh, a number of years ago, back uh, when we had the 1988 uh, uh, land buy or open space buy and with the ordinance that was put into place and the $8 million grant and some and, and state funding that was uh, applied. Uh, and from that, uh, when you take a look at the, the, I went back and looked at all the minutes and, and as far as how did it get named a nature preserve, uh, it was because it was originally uh, the Noank Realty property. And then but you take a look at uh, the, 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 uh, the minutes to everything. It's a very, it was a very protracted uh, 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 naming process because what was happening was that the, uh, there was a small group of mountain bikers that wanted to put trails through the Mortimer Wright uh, uh, property. Uh, and they successfully work, worked with the town council uh, to get those uh, in place. And then as a follow on to that, then they went ahead and, and renamed it uh, as an, the, uh, the <coughs> Mortimer Wright uh, uh, Nature Preserve. And that's what's on the posted sign today. So based on that action that happened back in April of 1991, uh, from the town council, it's what purely, purely within their jurisdictions. Uh, the, the equivalency of these two properties, I don't see a difference in them uh, relative to, you know, from a naming perspective. And, and as long as the uh, uh, Parks and Rec has agreed to it, it's going to fall uh, more under their purview if they want to go and prove it uh, with signage and that type of stuff. Uh, and as far as uh, my recommendation is that we make a motion here. Uh, that the Conservation uh, Commission concurs with the Parks and Rec Commission recommendation to the town for resolution to name the conservation and public recreation easement area located on the town property of 500 Pequannock Road, the uh, Sackasas uh, Nature Preserve, and upon approval of the uh, council, that notification be made to the State of Connecticut Department of Energy and Prote Environmental Protection of the name change pursuant to the applic uh, applicant's uh, conservation and public uh, easement. So that's my motion. I'm looking for a second. I'll second. It's Michelle. All right. So let's have a discussion. Um, I think that uh, I don't have any objections to the rationale and the discourse. I guess my real question would be, <clears throat> we've created and approved a stewardship plan, which is the Birch, Birch Plain Creek and Kalnoski conservation areas. 
So with a net, and we kind of put that because they're right all together. So when you have this name change, um, and when you look into the actions per se, uh, I you know I wouldn't say that there's things in there that preserve certain flora and fauna in there. Should there be, or as a result of this uh, motion, would we be required to update that stewardship management plan? Um, so let me throw that out, and I guess Tom and your subcommittee would be the appropriate responders to that. Right, and, and I recognize that the, it, why we made them stewardship plans a workbook per se, because they change and they use updating, and that's just part of the name gets changed to better recognize that particular parcel or portion of a parcel. Uh, that's just something we have to do. And we've got a revision process in place for the stewardship plans. And we've recognized that in the stewardship plan uh, and, uh, and do an update. It's not a problem, piece of cake. Okay. <laughs> I guess my question is, this would necessitate that update. Yes, I agree. Okay, okay. <laughs> that, that's really where I was going. Uh, so that there are some follow on actions as a result of this motion. All right, let me open it up. Other other comments and feedback input? I don't see, oh, Michelle. Yes, Michelle, I just wanna say, I appreciate all the work you guys did to get all this information to make it really easy for us to make a decision. Read it. <laughs> all right, uh, do we need to, uh, without uh, an additional comments, uh, do we need to reread the motion? I don't, all right. So therefore, uh, the motion on the part to support the name change, uh, all those in favor? All right, that was unanimously passed. So the resulting actions from that motion are gonna be twofold. One, Bruce is, um, I, I'm sorry, Tom, did you send Bruce a copy Bruce of that? Bruce should already have a copy of that. Okay. So that he doesn't have to <laughs> do that on the fly. No, I, I have it in email. All right. So, um, Bruce, you know, what I think is, is the appropriate format is to what? Send an email. And I think the, what I got back, an email or a letter to the town council and parks and rec uh, that summarized the discussion we just had as well as the motion. All right. That's it. That's, uh, and I would add to that, that as a result of that, we would, um, you know, certainly at a future date, update our stewardship plan associated with that property to reflect, uh, you know, the preserve uh, uh, categorization that's been included. So those would be the two follow on actions. So I will take the action with Bruce to put together a, a letter um, and uh, Tom and his subcommittee would take the action to Put it on the schedule for um, uh, an update uh, for that uh, particular plan. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, so, Sue or Eugenia, is that is that uh, any other comments? Would you like to make uh, on that topic? I think that sounds great, and I, I just want to say that um, if. I don't know how you do your um, manage, stewardship management plans and stuff, but we're happy to uh, give any input we may have from uh, spending a lot of time on that property. It, it does have a few challenges that maybe should be part of the plan too. So we're happy to either review it or work with you. Just let right. us know. Um, the, the current version of the plan is out there on the town website. Okay. Under the Conservation Commission uh, section under resources and docs and under uh, what's now called the Birch Plain Creek and Kolnowski Conservation Areas. And I guess the subcommittee will have to kind of review the, what, what name should that now have because it's more than just the, that quote, what you call the King property it really has a few more, but they'll, they'll work on that and we'll come back in a future meeting. Uh, and any input, uh, Sue and Eugenia, that you'd like to do for recommendations for actions or improvements to that document uh, would be appreciated. So you could send it to me or Bruce or Tom, and uh, we'll we'll take that into account. Great, thanks. Okay, all right, mm -hmm. thank you. So that so, is. Uh, it, am I am I on? Yep. Oh. Okay, good. I, I just I I I just can't thank you enough for 
paying such close attention to all of this. Uh, we are, this is just a really exciting development. Uh, we GCA went into this with the, with the idea, actually in response to the diversity, equity, and inclu inclusion movement that this town has been going through. And because of the fact that there's been, uh, the equity issue is uh, the equity in open space. And because the town had not really taken any action on, on developing a, a full loop trail, there was a partial uh, blue trail that was up there uh, near the school. Uh, this is just excellent news because the fact that the, the uh, commission, this, the Parks and Rec Commission decided that it should be up to the tribal council and then their decision to call it Thasicus. And then the whole story which I think you might want to have, and we would be happy to send you. There are two, there's a letter and there's a historical doc document. There are two documents that came from the tribal council that are really very, very inspiring. Uh, and uh, we, again, we'd be happy to share that with you. And we're planning, once we have the, the whole trail finished, we're planning on having an event with the, with the King Kolnaski Trails Committee that was established about a year ago now um, and invite the, the tribal council for to uh, some a sort of trail opening event, which we will we will hope to have publicized in uh, in the day. And Larry, hopefully we can get some videotape of that of that uh, event when it happens. It's uh, right now Parks and Rec is very busy. There's still a few more things that need to be done, but hopefully it's going to take place this fall sometime. Thank you again. All right, thank you. Yeah, forward any of that and over communication is uh, you know, always a good thing. Uh, so we might attach some of that information to the letter to the town. Okay. Uh, all right, so moving along, I mean, it, this is kind of the very first topic as Tom mentioned. So what I'd like to do is bring up our stewardship plan index. And this has been updated by Tom uh as of current well with the exception of what we just said uh let me try to expand all that stuff so let's go through this so uh you'll see the drafts and the uh, initial approvals i guess the word initial you should make that just approval right um so if we look through here so the, what we just talked about would be the Birch Plain Creek. Uh, the, let's see, that's that kind of covers the other ones, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, right now is so right now we're looking at an update um, update planned. If I could spell right uh, to support the motion of uh, September 13th, September 13th, well, at least it's not well, Friday. Technically, Larry, you'd want to make the, to when the town council completes their action, we, I'm not gonna do anything until the town council approves this. So it's uh, that, 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 yep, that's, that's fine. Approval. Yep. Uh, pending town approval. All right. Um, so if I run through these, these were on hold and it did get, uh, let's say, I think, well, technically, let's see, Wolfbrook, I, I kind of lost track, Bruce. Did, has that been completed and executed, the Wolfbrook property? No, not yet. That has been okay, we're still, we're still, okay. So we're still waiting for that for the formal transfer per se. Uh, so that's on hold. Uh, any other comments, Tom, that, that in terms of this? Uh... Well, the only other one was the, that, that I'm gonna bring up tonight was the, the Mystic uh, River Coastal Plan, the 12.9 acres uh, for August. Yep, yeah, that's on the agenda. So we'll get right. to that. Well, All that's right. That's the agenda item we're on, right? Uh, that... Yes, we're on, we're on the stewardship plan in general. So I always want to start off with an overall summary and then go into the specifics. So we talked about 
uh, quote, Birch uh, Plain Creek, and now we're going to talk about Mystic River Coastal. So if I'm looking at the agenda, uh, then that is the next, is that the next thing on the agenda? Yes. Okay. So let us bring that up. Uh, bup, 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 bup. Share, share, stop, share, share screen. Uh, where'd it go? Oh, that's it there. Okay, so that's the King property. Uh, neighborhood parts that was it's there next, although that's a different topic, but. All right, there's the Mystic River. Is that readable? Pretty much. Okay. All right, so what we normally do on these things is Tom kind of goes through and we focus on the uh, section, uh, I think five and six. Four as we and go five. Through there. Four and five. Uh, okay, so. Okay, just as a, where we're in the introduction here, pretty much based on some discussions we had a few uh, meetings ago and, and pushed by uh, uh, Bray Rafferty, who's on, on the committee here for the, the stewardship plans, we took a look at, um, is, there, are there, is there a stewardship plan that we could focus in on relative our, to our coastal areas uh, based on, on the lesson learned that we did when we uh, did around the, uh, <coughs> Industrial Drive, uh, which is uh, off of uh, the um, uh, Cove area, is there something along either the Mystic River or the Thames River? Uh, the Thames River, there's really, we don't have any open space uh, along that side, but along the Mystic River, I found three properties that do abut uh, the river and, and focused in on those. Uh, there's one at, at Seaford Road, which is the largest one, uh, as you can see a little bit down here in the ownership and land history that was um, purchased by the town in 1971 for sewer purposes. Um, then we have uh, two other smaller parcels uh, on No Ank Road and on River Road um, in regard to that are along uh, the, uh, they're not abutting properties, but they're uh, nearby. Uh, and all these are just held currently for a coastal protection. Uh, so and that's about, I just want to kind of put things in perspective of where these uh, three properties are. The Cedar Road, the Noank Road, almost a butt. Uh, and then the River Road is farther up, obviously, uh, on, you know, the river, on River Road itself. Going on to the next page. Uh, again, this is pretty, taking a look at the economic value of these. Uh, we took a look at, at the Cedar Road, and it's really high at uh, 9,800 per acre. No Ank is a little bit less at 67, and then River Road at 4,700. So, um, um, at least, uh, this kind of, you know, that we are, relatively speaking, higher value uh, areas. Uh, and then uh, resources, uh, pretty much these are in pretty good shape. They're probably the most, uh, it's just mostly trash and stuff in the ways, uh, but the uh, <laughs> we've got some pictures in here in regard to uh, what we see around the pump station, uh, and then the, and then what you see from the from there to to, to no Ank, uh, Road. Uh, again, all these obviously are going to be all uh, along the river type, you know, flood zones. We put that in similar to what we did for the uh, area uh, <laughs> down on Industrial Drive. This is all pretty much, uh, you know, it's, it's all going to relatively going to get inundated uh, as, as uh, tidal uh, areas and also with the uh, just overall uh, global uh, warming and the climate change and the expected sea level rise. Uh, so these, we just put, we drafted all those maps up there, uh, <laughs> pretty much impacted. Only one of these areas is of a critical uh, natural diversity area, and that's all in the Cedar uh, Road area. Uh, just the lower half of it along the uh, Amtrak uh, line, lanes there. Uh, otherwise, the other two sites are, are just, are, are basically a title. So it has to be expected. So we got, history hasn't changed much on these areas. They've been pretty much it. 
So uh, I don't really, there's no unique history ruins or anything like that to a uh, focus of interest and there's no trails or anything on any of these at this time. So this is a standard uh, uh, paragraphs four and five uh, for review as far as you know that we take a look at uh, potential markup uh, you know mark boundary markings. Uh, there is a, some minor cleanup particularly at the Cedar Grove along the Amtrak tracks. Uh, because there is a, a pretty good road there that uh, does go out to the tracks that, that is used for maintenance. I actually have uh, multiple times seen the Amtrak people use, that's their major access to that portion of the of the track system there. So it makes it fairly easy for, for uh, people to either walk or ride bicycles up to it. And, and uh, there's evidence that there's been some uh, campfires along there and that type of stuff. So there's other trash and stuff. So. It is an area that would be that's the time I put the require uh, recommendations in here to work with public works regarding the survey of the area for signage uh, and the wetland and bases and uh, for uh, again taking a look and working with the uh, Long Island Science Study for what what's the best way to really approach this if we need to be smarter on this. Uh, I then had public works review this whole plan. Uh, they only had one comment, which is the next statement that this is how they wanted this to read. I've, 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 I'll put that in the way that they they requested it. Uh, they, it the real focus is that if there's anything going on at on that property is that they need to approve it before anything happens there uh, because there are concerns in regard to liability waivers and, uh, and such. And so, uh, and then for evaluation is, is that we're just maintaining uh, as coastal areas uh, for resilience uh, so that's, uh, I move that we accept this, uh, 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 approve this uh, plan uh, as part of the, uh, the workbook as presented. Is there a second? Uh, no second. There, there is a second from Michelle. All right. Repeat open you again, Karen. <laughs> yep, your hand is faster than mine. <laughs> <laughs> open for discussion. I have right. a question. Oh. Uh, Bray, Bray was had the quicker hand on that. Okay. Ann can go first. Oh. All right. <laughs> he cedes the floor. Ann, you have the floor. Um, I just can't help but wonder with um, the the land being in a flood zone the, and the sewer uh, pumping station there, what the impact of sea level rise and being in a flood zone has on the the sewer pump. And I know that's probably beyond the scope of this plan, but should it at least be mentioned that uh, some kind of plan needs to be in place? Or maybe does anybody know what the potential impacts of inundation of water would be on the pumping station? The pump. Well, this is where uh, why I sent this whole plan over to par Public Works and through Michelle Maitland, who's the responsible individual from the staffing person, the town staffing perspective for any of the flood walk uh, and, and runoff and the, all, all this MS4 and, and everything. So she's the point of contact on the staff for the for the town for your type of question. Uh, and that's what come. You know, that's how come I put I put this in as a further consideration of Gus and Seawater, you know, the last item in the management plan as far as somebody's got to, you know, for tracking your question per se. Uh, and, you know, I don't think it's from a conservation commission thing. Uh, it's more of a resiliency or a public works issue uh, in regard to what what is their long term plan? Are they going to raise this thing up? Are they going to what are, what are they going to do? You can tell from the pictures in there that the, the, the station is a, is probably a good 24 to uh, uh, 48 inches above the, the, the sea level right now. Uh, so it, you know, it will essentially become an island to some degree. But, uh, you know, what happens with Cedar Street and that whole inundation areas, uh, you know, it's kind of up in the air. Uh, but it's really their long-term plan as far as on how they want to handle and what's really going to happen with the sewage and all this type of stuff relative to, to the sea level rise. And I, but I think it's to some degree outside the scope of uh, our commission in regard to that long-term issue. Yeah, the sustainability coordinator, you know, that, that is yet to be hired, but it was funded, would be addressing that question with the public works department, et cetera. 
I think the, you know, I, I agree with Tom in terms of sustainability per se isn't there. Our, our take would be when the waters rise, then the waters go inland, right? And then where were those, those next areas, which are now, I guess, dry, which will then become, quote, uh, you know, seawater marshes, because it, that's just the natural. So that's kind of what our forward looking should be when we're looking at just the natural areas. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of space because we did look at that, you know, on the original plan to see what could we go after to protect it. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of low lying areas that aren't already developed. Um, Bray, you had your, your hand up. I just want to make one comment that over the years, uh, the town has had a variety of storms that have uh, inundated pumping stations, whether mm -hmm. sewer pumping stations or water pumping stations. And it is something that's it's out of our out of our hands as far as municipally how they're going to tackle tackle the problem. Uh, sewage, though, is is certainly sewage spillage as a result of flooding, uh, septic systems that are failing, and floodwaters go across their property and then out into the environment. All that sorts of stuff are, I think, are within our privy. But uh, at this present time, uh, looking at all the pumping facilities in the town um, is, I think, is a very much an active, ongoing thing. Uh, within the public works as well as the planning department. Uh, so I, it's in good hands. It's just, I think a lot of places they're struggling. How do we do it? Where's the money to do it? Uh, what sorts of things do we have as alternatives? And th those issues are getting pushed much uh, further up the lines to address. And I, and I think that this place is, this particular sewage tree facility is on that radar. Okay, yeah, that, that helps a lot, thank you. I, I was particularly worried or concerned about um, sewage leakage and the contamination factor, but I think it's, it's fine to have it on the radar, so to speak. All right, uh, other comments or questions? Oh, Bray. Okay, Bray, again. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Tom, very much for your, uh, again, uh, diligent work on putting all this together. Uh, as I was reading through this, I just uh, was trying to think of any other shoreline town-owned properties that might be also included in this group. Uh, and the facilities that I'm thinking about are in Noank. And I think the Noank most of them are on the mouth of the Mystic River. Uh, there's one open space property uh, across from Noang Shipyard that I don't know if we've picked up on that piece of property or not um, in, in, in our, any of our lists. Uh, for instance, also the town dock in Noang down in the village. Uh, that uh, they, put some money into a new dock down there, I noticed. So is that on our list also? Uh, well, it's in there in the under three, three acre. It's, it, those are very small parcels, but uh, right. Tom, yeah. And again, that goes back to the decision that we made months ago in regard to trying to take a look at where do I draw the cutoff line on these small, particularly these smaller parcels and are, are they really worthy of putting in, if they abut to something, I've added them in. Uh, there's a couple that was at the one acre uh, areas, but like that town dock, you know, I, it's so small. Uh, I just don't know, it, it's more of a, and again, it's, it's got this, I think it comes under the facility as opposed to the open space portion, but we, not to say we haven't included uh, things like that. Uh, but I did not include those if we want. I, you know, I have no problem going back and adding those. I just didn't know on, on this particular uh, uh, stewardship plan, how far down to go as far as on the uh, acreages. I recognized your uh, concerns. 
I'm thinking of, <clears throat> particularly on, on this particular item uh, that we're addressing is coastal. And unfortunately, the coastal properties that we have are tiny little slivers along the whole process. Uh, and that unfortunately is what we have to work with. Uh, we don't have any large you know, 25 acre plus properties that are right along the shoreline like Bluff Point, for instance. Uh, so in, in some of the management on this is just it's somewhere along the line, you know, wi within our text <coughs> material that somehow we have a reference to it, uh, that we've recognized them. Uh, what we can do, uh, what I can do is uh, put the short list together and send it over to you, you know, after this meeting, and then we can have a further discussion about it. And, and uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. So I guess, are you asking me, are you reckon, I guess this from, from the, from a, from a committee perspective, should, are you looking for us to do an update to include those in a, prior to approval or do you want to approve this and then revise it at a subsequent meeting uh why don't we approve this and then and, and uh revise it if, if deemed necessary at a future meeting okay i just wanted to cl clarify where we're heading with this discussion I have no problem either way it's just i just yeah well that that would have been my recommendation is is we have one and for these other little bits and pieces you know that town dock is probably 200 square feet. I mean, we're talking really small stuff. But um, but it it like I said it, that we said earlier, these are living documents, and certainly can be improved and revised as conditions warrant. So other comments and input, because so far the proposals or the motion stands, given the the, the <clears throat> caveat of future enhancements. Other comments or questions? All right, seeing none, uh, we will uh, call for a vote to approve uh, the uh, Mystic River Coastal 12.9 acre set of parcels as written with the understanding that, you know, there may be future changes as we try and increase the quote, quote view of, the, of and definition of coastal property. So we call for a vote. All in favor of approving as is? Aye. I see hands, hands, hands. All right, so that again is a unanimous one. So uh, Bruce, we can note that is approved. And Tom, the way this works then is you then remove the draft from it. And then I'll, and then I'll forward that to for Bruce and you for posting. Yeah, it goes to, yeah, it goes to me and I, I kind of Get, get sent it to IT. So that's kind of the process we got. Uh, so I'll, I can take care of that in the next web, web update. Yeah, and, um, and Bray and I will work on developing the expansion of other coastal areas now that we've got a, a foot, you know, a process laid out uh, to take a look. I, when I take a look at it, I'm looking, I, I pulled up the map here and, uh, you know, there's things like this uh, the Spicer property on BB Cove. Uh, we've got uh, Esker Point Beach. So there's some of these other park facilities that we could look at uh, if that's the way we want to go with it. So there'll be further discussions uh, rather than just taking a look at the open space areas uh, without any kind of facilities on them. All right, uh, very good. So completed that one. Um, the next item on the under the workbook section is a Maple Glen status. So that was waiting for uh, the, the assessor's office on the ownership category. Did, was there any feedback or input on that, Tom? Well, when I, I went and met with Noah, uh, the GIS uh, coordinator in the IT department, uh, he was surprised that it hadn't been already processed down. But then when I pull the string out, there's a few other properties, such as the Gosa's properties hasn't been updated. Yet. There seems to be a hang up in the assessor's office. And Noah said he would go talk to them and kind of nudge them for me <laughs> uh, internally. Uh, but until that happens, and I really can't go forward because I can't even generate the maps to, to update the thing with. 
because I need to have the GIS uh, system updated. So as soon, he says he can, it'll be with, it'll happen within about a day or so once it comes out of the assessor's office, but that's where the hangup is right now. And they just seem to have a backlog going on in there. So I just, I, I'm just putting it on hold and that's what the status reflected when, at the, uh, when you presented that earlier on your share screen there. All right, uh, so that's still the case. We will, uh, I guess we'll chat a little bit about that. Tom and I met with Noah uh, and there's a more general feedback, a positive one, by the way, uh, and we'll get to that. Um, well, I guess we can get to that now. I'm looking at, I'm, I'm checking my list, but actually I had that slightly early under parcel status. So, um, so t Tom set up that same meeting with Noah and uh, you know, we all met in terms of um, uh, the GIS status. Uh, Noah's a new hire, probably within the last, what, the last three, four months, Bruce? Um, yeah, probably about that, maybe a little longer than that. Yeah, and he's been busily uh, fixing uh, the GIS systems. Um, and uh, Tom, why, why don't you share the good news? Because it, it actually will save us some time on what came out of that meeting. Right now, what Noah did was I, I, I pointed out to him some issues relative to the, 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 the town of Groton open space stock map that lists all the open spaces on it. So you got a lot of problems here that we need to kind of sort through and stuff. And I, I and so he said, well, give us, can you give me your database as far as, so I provided him our Excel spreadsheet that we've been passing around uh, and updating as we get more information and, and has all the deeds tied to it and all this. And what he has done is that uh, as part of the update of the open space stock map, he has also sucked in our database. Wow. Wow. And so now if you click, and he's made it almost interactive, so it's that rather than when you go in, in, uh, on a normal GIS thing, is when you click on it, it brings up the parcel card and, and all that kind of stuff. It'll now, when if you click on the open space map, it'll bring up all the info, all our information that's in our in the database in our Excel spreadsheet. And so uh, he's kind of auto automated that, and it's in the process right now of, of making sure that that all works. And so in theory, we'll have another the open space map that'll be on the, on, you know, the, just like you have the GIS information for all the parcels in town, you'll be able to have uh, a, another map that'll come out for all the open space uh, parcels. And wow. part of, on the on the town website. So, I, and I'd like to point out that that's in there as an attribute table uh, so that you can bring up different layers based upon the attribute selections. And so he was going to do that. So that that was it was kind of like this is great, um, and it takes uh, it makes version control and updates, et cetera, a heck of a lot easier for us to use. Now, one of the things that we had left with is that that he would provide the commission access to that that view, the the, the open space view, as well as the attribute tables. Um, Bruce, could you, I mean, that was about, what was that, two weeks ago, Tom? Two weeks ago, yes. Yeah. So, Bruce, could you take us a to-do to, to, well, two things. One is, is to give him, and I'm oh, looking for your head nods on this, uh, the thanks from the Conservation Commission for the work he's done uh, in supporting open space. And secondly is, can we get, can we get the link <laughs> to, to, to the data? <laughs> so thank him and then give him a head slap. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll reach out to Noah tomorrow and it's, it, it should it should be should be ready to share. I would think. Yeah, well, he said he had a we threw him some curveballs here, particularly when we said what's the linkage, you know, as far as for what the layers are and stuff. Like we'd like to see a thing for all the state-owned stuff. We'd like to see a thing for the for the privately held, just as we have organized. The, the Excel spreadsheet, and we, and then he and then we kind of threw him a curveball. I says, "Well, what about uh, this Kalinowski area here? It's a it's it's not the whole parcel. It's a sub portion of a parcel based on an easement. That's what those kind of nuances he was not familiar with, and that's really why he was hesitant to just 
give us the link. He's not, he's already got this thing ready to go, but he's 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 trying to fix those type of problems. And so I didn't know how long that's going to take him. And we we're sympathetic. He said, "Take your time. You the amount of work you've already done on this is fantastic, and we want to make sure that you know it's a product that you can work with and that it meets our needs." And this is really the first time I've had an interface because of my travels and COVID and everything else uh, to actually meet with him and to. Uh, and, I think he he needed a little bit more time, and that's coming. I haven't put the pressure on him. It's only been two weeks uh, for him, and I know he's got a lot of other things keeping the rest of the town website, uh, the, the GIS. Yeah, I, I'm okay. I'm okay getting you know for because it has value for access to it without that sub parcel classification, because then it allows us to kind of continue to, to work through it. So the, we don't mean to apply, or Bruce, I certainly didn't mean to imply that were pressuring him for that extra work that he agreed to do. It was more to say is, hey, we'll work with you. I mean, we're, this is restricted to us, that, which was fine, so that we could use it as we're going through it and as he updates it, et cetera, then it gets updated. Once he gets that done, then what I want to do is, is provide the appropriate links to the, to the conservation website pages to get it more visible to the community. But for the short term, it was just the commission. So that was that was really the ask. Uh, Michelle? Yeah, I just wanted to throw it out there. Um, I'm, I'm teaching physics this, this semester and next semester. And it happens that I'm sharing the office with the GIS person I was taking my class from. And I told her about the map we did. And she said, oh, maybe you'll have another project. So, so I'm glad that he's picking that up. And if there is something that we want to play with that's kind of above and beyond what we're asking him to do, I actually will have access to the lab again next spring that we could play with something to do like the next iteration. Yeah, I mean, that's the that's why I mentioned the attribute tables because we can add an attribute to that table and would allow us to do those kinds of additional analysis, whether it's, for example, some some measure of tree coverage information, you know, uh, or whatever we could think of. So I think you're right, um, but you know, we so we're on the path. So th this is this is really good news uh, that we wanted to share with you. So uh, good stuff. Um, other any other comments? Okay, so let me do that one. Uh, cross off the no one. Uh, I will say, oh, then the next thing that I had on my list under this topic was the RTM letter. So this is going to shock you. Uh, let me share something different here. Stop share there. Was this in the package, Larry? Mm, what are you going to show us? No. Okay. Um, Let's see, I do have it up someplace, don't I? Yes, there it is, hold on. Let me do share again. Uh, share screen, uh, stewardship plan, section 10. Okay, so um, the RTM, uh, I kept trying to remember, the RTM letter was, was that in the, the agenda item, Bruce? I, know I, we did I it. thought it was, but I just looked through the, the packet. I'm not sure if it's in there. Uh, let me let me go look because I thought we had discussed it to and approved the council member approved it. Uh, let me switch the share and go back to that. Um, so let me stop share and then share the the letter to just to make sure we're on the same page. Uh, agenda. Let's do what you meant. All right, so at our last, or two meetings, I'm trying to remember when it was, but it went out August 17th. So it might've been at our August meeting where um, one of the, the follow-on actions for the stewardship ex execution of the plan, you get the plans in place and I gotta get executed, right? Was the thought to get uh, RTM members to sponsor right. uh, Great. Uh, community groups in their districts. So put together, so we had that little subcommittee um, and put together uh, this letter um, 
which went out and we identified, you know, we took the, the, those 10 parcels that, that are in the, uh, in the website, gave them a link to it and said, oh, we would like, and then took the, uh, took our district map and added to it, you'll see the, the 10 properties um, to this map and then sent it out to the RTM members looking for their support of, of open space in general. And would they be interested in sponsoring a local community group in their district for parcels in their district? So this is, uh, let's see. No, 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 no. Uh, I, oh, I put in there uh, that uh, we have talked with Mark Barry on it. He supported this approach. The, the discussion with Mark was that the only issue he had was, I can't do them all at once, right? I said, don't worry about it. I don't think that'll be an issue, is that it'll, they'll be staged out over time as we work through those. Let's see, kind of see what it is. So I asked for their uh, feedback uh, prior to the October 4th meeting. I then went back on the 18th and aghast, uh, asked again. Um, and let me show you, give you the results. Uh, share system. Okay, so I went through this and there's 41 uh, RTM members who responded to the initial memo an additional four responded to my reminder memo so that six out of 41 so not exactly a overwhelming response um and you know what i thought is is that uh, i would at least you know on record thank those that did response bruce that's the list here. Kathy Chase, uh, Sima, Eben, Beverly Washington, uh, Rosanna Kapowski, James uh, Gustafson, and Bruce Jones did respond. So thank you. you know, <laughs> thank, thank them as part of the minutes that they did respond. Um, there was, uh, as you might expect, if they responded, uh, pretty much they supported it. There was kind of different levels, you know, Kathy said, well, but that's nice, but what's the, the responsibility of the group, you know, that, that they would be sponsoring? And I said, we would get back to you on that. Is, you know, one of the things that, that we would help with some organizational helpful hints, et cetera, et cetera. And also public works would do that. Uh, um, my response on the percentage is um, there is no right number because it's all going to be based upon the needs of the town, although the state says, you know, above 20%, federal government says above 30%, you know, but it says, guys, this, I don't want to focus on a number. I want to focus on what's, what's the right thing based upon uh, the requirement, you know, we're getting into sustainability and carbon sequestration. I mean, what are we trying to accomplish? Uh, so I, I did get back that response. Uh, the only other one I thought was interest, oh, uh, Roseanne said they might be interested, but would wanted the Conservation Commission to formally oppose a mystic oral school development. And I did respond. It says I didn't think that's an appropriate for us to respond on a development where we have already responded on the open space portion of that uh, property development. If you recall, I think it was last year, we did send a letter that said you know, we support development as a generic, but we want to make sure that land is protected. We want to make sure any development doesn't uh, impact, you know, that, that open space land. But the nature of the specific development, I didn't think, unless you guys want to weigh in on it, I didn't think was within the scope of our responsibility that said it ought to be this type of development versus this other type of development, right? Um, other than what we've already said is we support more higher density uh, conservation development. You know, if, if it's if it's residential, uh, I don't. You know, I don't have an opinion. I don't think we should have an opinion if it's a commercial endeavor. Um, 
Okay. Anyway, that's that's that response. Eh. So I think the the thing is is that uh, let's see, what's that? One, two, uh, district three. Of course, there wasn't any in district three anyway. Uh, so we did get we did at least get one from every district. So that that's a good thing. So that's probably enough to start with <laughs> as we work through the. Uh, the planning process, and I think Michelle, one of the items in your ticky list was was how does one organize? You know, how does one engage and organize a a community group? Not necessarily doing it, but what's the the roadmap to do that? Uh, so at least we have a few folks to go contact once we provide some direction of here's what we think they should do. Um, any any comments or observations? Well. Oh. Yep, Michelle? Yeah, so Larry, I, I sent you, not too long after the meeting, I sent you that list of, here's some ideas. Did we did we want to talk about that now or, or another time? I don't have it up because I just thought, I just remembered that I did that, but, but is that yeah, something? You did that, yep, and I responded to it. I, I, would, I would say, I mean, it was kind of like the sequence. So we got right. with Public Works, who supported this approach. We got with the RT members to kind of round up, are there any sponsors? And we got a couple, we got six, I guess unique ones, yeah. So four plus two, so six. Uh, so I think you're right, the next step would be to say, all right, how do we wanna proceed in that? So I would suggest at the next meeting, we put, have that on the agenda. Okay. And go through some of your ideas. And then the question would be is, how do we take that and I guess the word would be how to execute that or get the community engaged uh, to work on it or in fact prioritize uh, the ones we want to do given public works doesn't want them all anyway maybe pick one you know that we would start with and have that discussion at our next meeting so I think that Bruce that would be an agenda item for what is my set October for October on um, uh, what what what's the what's the keyword there Michelle the, the volunteer uh, coordination volunteer coordination planning I guess yeah that sounds good okay all right um, so that that's you know kind of informational on what what's happened. Uh, so that's that checky mark. Um, and that was the organization. Oh, the organization workbook that did that. Uh, Tom asked for a 60 day checkpoint. So that's next month. Tom, as you recall from last month. So that's that's next month. Um, and Ramblewood Park. So that's the, the other thing I have under stewardship. And I think that's in the agenda. So that came through as a request. Uh, let's, let me stop sharing here. So if you go back to the agenda, damn, where is it? My mouse doesn't work as fast as I want it to. Uh, bear with me while I do some screen organization. Whoops. I think it's thick. That. It was that. Okay. Uh, sure. Agenda item. Okay. So we're back to this. Hey, come on, Zoom. Get out of my way. All right. So. Uh, I think that was back here. Wasn't that the one that was somehow? It should be on page 13. Yeah. Right there. There we go. All right. So um, there was a discussion at town council meeting on neighborhood parks and playgrounds and i thought it would be useful for us to determine what if anything 
we wanted to uh, input, weigh in on, or comment on on this. So it was in the handout package. Um, and I guess there, I guess it gets into, you know, the parks, rather than open space per se, recreation, right? Active recreation versus passive uh, recreation was the question. You know, is this particular property? And I thought that it would be appropriate for us to uh, either, you know, say we're not going to weigh in, or if if we wanted to weigh in one way or another. So if we go through here, it's the old uh, school property. Uh, and I, it, well, I'm sorry. There's the school. There's this piece of property here, which. Uh, well, let's see. Bramblewood Park. So it was this space, I, I believe it was this space here that they're talking about taking this and kind of improving it, quote unquote, to make it a more uh, active one. And I guess the entryway from it is down here where you got to walk through there to get to it. So it seemed a bit, bit of a stretch to get into there. Uh, Larry? Um, yep. Uh, just to go back to that pic the picture you had, the overview picture back there. I walked this yesterday, um, <laughs> but you got Lapstrick at the top there, Lapstrick Court at that corner. There actually is a sidewalk, an, an asphalt sidewalk that goes in there uh, at that corner. You can pick up, a, you look like you're walking on somebody's lawn because they keep, you know, they cut, their lawn goes right up to it, but then that ends and you go into this uh, big open space area. And then there's also at the other end of the big open space there, it says where it says Ramblewood Park there, and you continue along, there actually uh, is, it's a, it's very groomed, you know, because Parks and Rec is, is cutting the grass and everything like that. It's very groomed all the way. And then the, there's another sidewalk that pick, you pick up at that corner of the property on that, uh, and it goes all the way out to Judson. And that's another asphalt uh, uh, sidewalk. So there is entrances at the north side and at the south side to the park area. Parks and Rec is already maintaining this uh, as a park area, but without facilities, any type of other, uh, either any kind of name boards or any type of uh, a baseball diamond or, or, or gym or, or kids play area or whatever. They haven't done anything to improve the park. And so I, to my, in my viewpoint, uh, you know, this ought to be looked at by Parks and Rec as as if they have funds to in, better improve this area. Uh, it's already in, you know, from an open space area, it's being tracked by Parks and Rec since they're already maintaining it. And so I did not include that in the stewardship plans that we had been working in this area since they're already maintaining it. All right, other comments or inputs? Yeah, Bray? Uh, this particular property is not too far away from me and, and um, uh, quite familiar with it. Could you go up to uh, the map instead of the uh, overlay here, the... Uh, this map? Uh, keep going, yeah, that one. Uh, one of the things that um, comes up is that uh, on this Rambling Brook property, in the map that we're looking at right now, on the right-hand side, there's a little bit of a, there is a tarred connection to what's Topsail Lane. Uh, what it doesn't show is that from right across the street from there, there is a second lane that goes up to Capstan Avenue. And then there's, if you go down to the left, there's another lane that goes right into the Butler School property. So there's a good connection all the way up to the Butler School. And I haven't heard any sort of local demand for playground equipment in there. Uh, a good part of the property to the left of uh, the big parcel is all under forest and briars and steep 
inclines behind people's houses and it's not accessible. So it's mostly that open lawn area. Uh, during the winter time, it's a favorite uh, hill to, for uh, people to go sledding on. Uh, other than that, people golf on it, they do whatever uh, for the local neighborhoods. But I haven't heard any, any sort of demands uh, to expand it. And uh, one question I wanna ask uh, you folks that live in Noank is at the, where the Noank School is, where the Noank Park is now, on the Noank School property, I thought there used to be a playscape up on one corner that I don't see anymore. Is that correct? There is uh, some playground equipment that's small, a couple swings, that's upper, the upper left-hand corner. I think that that's still there, last I looked. I thought, um, but, I took a look uh, this summer and, and it looked as though in that upper southwest corner, if you will, where I thought it was, uh, is to, uh, sort of jumbled right now. There is uh, a lot of brush and so forth in there. And I don't, I didn't see it at all. So it looks as though it's been removed. So my question is, uh, we haven't uh, taken any position on the Butler property. What's gonna to happen to the Butler school? Uh, now that it's closed, that decision of the whole property is gonna be up for question. And there is an active, children's uh, play area on that property. And there's good access from the neighborhoods uh, to get to there. So uh, at this point, I don't see any reason for having Parks and Rec do anything more than what they are doing now at, at the property in question, considering that we have uh, a, a little baseball field, if you want that, at, at the Butler School, there's a playground at the Butler School, and it's easy, accessible, uh, actually from Ramley Brook, uh, to go straight up there if you, if you so wish. So that's my comment is that I don't feel at this time there is the need, considering that at the Butler School, there is an open playground that exists there now, an open uh, baseball field and so forth. Uh, and the question is what's gonna happen, of course, to that in the future. Yeah. All right, uh, other comments? Let me go back to the actual uh, original request. Um, yeah, Tom, uh, uh, let's see, Tom, you had a say, so let's go Karen and then we'll go back to Tom. I was just going to say that I um, appreciate, Bray, Bray, what you filled us in on. I have used the swing sets and things at the Butler School. And my question um, was, um, are they going to keep those areas at the Butler School? What's Because if those playground areas disappear, then there's a different question. But I'm not sure the commission is the one that should be dealing with it. So that's all I have uh, to say. All right, uh, Tom, you had your. I th I I hear what both Bray and, and Karen are saying, and I think this really goes back to the original question that uh, uh, Councillor Franco brought up: is we've got these schools, and they have a lot of recreational and open space potential. However, it appears to, and from my viewpoint, this is personal opinion, that. The, when the when the town offers these up, they don't. They, there's no preamble uh, in regard to a potential subdivision to protect a subdividing of the parcel to keep a portion for the town, and then give the commercial portion out. In particular, if you, you know, on the West Side School, it's that it, it, uh, uh, it, it was given away. You know, it was, was advertised. It's the entire parcel, and that's so. And so we make decision or get asked for comments after the fact. Whereas I think in, in the case of this of this uh, this school, we should be being more proactive and say, hey, we ought to be from a conservation perspective saving this amount and then trying to sell the rest of the remainder that's not doesn't really have any conservation value. And I think we need to, that's really in my that's view. Yeah. That's a good idea, Tom. Other other comments? So 
what I hear is uh, potentially a proposal that says that we respond uh, or provide input to the council on this that says several things. One, we don't support additional investments or improvements uh, to the Ramblewood Park at this time, uh, given that there's existing fields and uh, playground equipment for it at the existing uh, Butler School. And furthermore, that when this goes on the market, that 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 they those fields or that field and or uh, you know uh, school ground equipment be carved out and reserved and not sold when they go to sell the rest of the property, which would then you know allow you not to have to worry about Ramblewood Park. Does that does that sound like? the go forward position of the commission. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Um, Bray, given this is in your backyard, as you said earlier, uh, could you draft up a response? I don't know if it's a response or an input that we could send to the town uh, on this topic. It really just goes over those, those three points. Uh, yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. Give me a few days to do it, though. No, that's fine. Um, the, given the speed at which the council works, I'm not too worried about this. Someone making a decision on this, you know, at, the, at their next meeting. Um, but but I think what Tom said earlier about getting ahead of these things mm -hmm. rather than waiting for a fait accompli. Is a you know is a probably a better investment of our time and, and more more inclined to get council members to think about our view rather than after the fact when they got a developer waving money at them right. Um, all right, so uh, so Bruce, that's an item that uh, uh, would be a. I don't know if we need a do we need a motion for that. Yeah, I, I probably would have a motion on that. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, all right. Let's see. Would uh, Tom or Bray, would you like to make that motion? Try to think of my head here real quick. <laughs> I move that we, uh, this is Tom Olson, I move that we. Uh, uh, inform the uh, planning department and, and the and town council is a recommendation that Bramble, uh, Ramblewood uh, Park not be improved any further and that a portion of the Sarah uh, of the SB Butler School property be carved out uh, for recreational and open space uh, purposes prior to any sale of the of the remaining portion of the of the uh, uh, property. I think that's it. Uh, Michelle? Yes, Michelle, I, I might add um, that that the existing facilities, the, the existing playground and baseball facilities be carved out, not just you know, to specify the point that those facilities already exist on that site. Yeah, Bray? Uh, just to follow up to Michelle's comment, uh, I was thinking about uh, there's a, a development off of Route 1, not too far away from me, that uh, was a Pfizer development. And when the property was a subdivision, uh, it came to, because it was next to Pequot Woods, uh, where would we have open space? What would be the function of the open space? And my inkling was because it's next to uh, Pequot Woods, that it'd be an addition to Pequot Woods or more in, in the keepings of uh, trees and uh, trees and flowers and bushes or whatever uh, be kept that way as, as that part of the open space. Well, I, I was overruled and instead they made a playground of that part which was 
going to be the open space addition in that subdivision. And the thing was years ago that because of the size of the subdivision, the potential for, for the number of kids and that there isn't a playground in the immediate area, uh, the Parks and Rec gets first grabs at what's available and uh, they, they put in a, a small playground. So I could see somebody coming in to the Butler property and if you're selling it off, the developer is going to sort of wish this is what I want and you're going to get whatever back corner that he doesn't want. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that at this point that we're going to have much influence on deciding whether or not the baseball field stays or the playground stays. Uh, it, it'd be nice to have some sort of play area if it gets developed at some point on the property, but not necessarily where it's going to be at, at the present time. Well, I, I think the preemptive strike on our part is to reserve the playing field, et cetera. If the, if the developer says, I agree, but I'd like to move it, then that's right. something that could be take, taken up on a, on a future uh, discussion. And I wouldn't have any objection to that, but it does preserve that neighborhood park and then you know keeps the additional development out of Ramblewood Park. So we do have a motion on the floor, to, you know, with a minor clarification, or I guess clarification is the right word. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Nice. Good second. All in favor? All right. Another unanimous vote. All right. Uh, so moved and. Ray, I think you, you almost have the letter written for you in the context of the motion. So, so that, I think that's, I, I think we might have to add a, a couple of comments and, and, and the say nice things to the council on, uh, you know, we support, we, we support their intent. <laughs> we just have a little different recommendation how to, how to go against it. All right, so that kind of goes through I think that was all the items I had under open space parcel and stewardship workbook. Um, the only other item that I see was related would be the Backwick uh, project that I think, uh, Karen, you, you were at the minutes of meeting of that. I was. And I think there was uh, some recommendations or, or at least an ask from us. Um, I, I, ha I do have your, I'm pretty sure My I minutes? have your minutes someplace. Uh, let's see where that went. Let me get rid of that. Uh, that's not, the ah, there it is. All right, I have, I found it. So let me stop that share, do this share. Backward. Okay. So, uh, Karen, this is the floor is yours. I think that's it, right? That's, yep, that's okay. it. Okay. Um, it was okay. a. Do you want me to go through the whole thing? Or well, I mean, it was in the agenda, so you could just about hit the highlights. I mean, I, I wouldn't read it. I mean, just. Your okay. your view of the highlights. Yeah. Um, well, they they spend most of the times discussing educational outreach and the need to get um, leads on their various um, goals. They have developed a goal sheet very similar to ours, and they're looking for project leads. Um, they spent a lot of time asking um, for all of us to look for people who might take that lead. And then they discussed um, the, the grant money coming from the federal government and how they would like to uh, make sure that everyone is aware that the, that grant money is available for conservation kinds of amenity, not amenities, but conservation work. Um, that really, th those were really the two most important issues they discussed. And then they also had Tom's name and my name on as possible leads for, for the BACWAC 
um, part, some of the cleanup in that area. And um, I was kind of surprised, but I also know that they have tremendous, they're having tremendous problems getting volunteers because their volunteers are so busy already. And I'll take any questions you have about any of the items on the agenda. Um, the, the rain garden projects and things like that are ongoing issues. They'll be doing that. They're really doing a push out into the schools and into some of the community areas. They're trying to find out how many of the rain, the rain barrels that they sold were actually sold in um, Baker's Cove area because that's where they really wanted the rain barrels. Um, but they're not sure how many were sold in that area but appreciate people all over Groton who did purchase them. Larry, uh, do any, you have any questions about specific things? Or does anyone well, else? I, I, well, I would say, does anyone have any on the 10 items shown? I was then gonna share their view or their ask of the Conservation Commission and we could discuss our response to that okay. ask. Um, okay. So I guess the first question is, does anyone have any questions on these 10? which really is the Backwick um, feedback from Karen. Yeah. This is Michelle, Michelle can, can you remind me what Backwack stands for? Bakers, let me, let me just, <laughs> let me just look at it. Bakers Associate. no. Bakers I Cove Watershed Committee. Okay. Thank you. Right. Baker's so, Watershed Committee, Michelle, was first started, it was first initiated because they found that Canada geese were causing tremendous pollution in the waters in Baker's Cove. Okay. And then they started studying it and seeing that there were other issues feeding into that, um, those issues in the cove. Okay. So, so this was their list. And I guess from their perspective, their ask of us was to develop a riparian buffer plan. Um, you know, you see, we're in there. And I thought about that and I went, you know, we do have a birch, I mean, we just talked about it, right? The, the birch creek plant at, at all that, that has plans in there. So more than the stewardship plan per se, I, my own view was that that's our feedback. That is our plan. Let me just throw that out for discussion to you guys. So, so is, is Baker's Cove connected to any of our properties that we have plans for? Yeah. Um, Tom, did you want to answer that? Right. I... The whole Birch Plain Creek a plan, a stewardship plan that we approved incorporates most of Baker's Cove. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and that, and we referenced that this this particular plan that, that um, he has up on the screen right now is referenced in our stewardship plan. So, right. should we just respond with that information? Well, the response is they're actually looking for people, the way I understand it right now, to actually go do something. Okay, rather than just talk about it. <laughs> Can we use the town committee, um, the, re the representative town committee volunteers uh, as part of our response? Is there anybody in that area? Right now, this is in an area that <laughs> I look at the responses that you received and there, there's nobody that's willing to set up a, a volunteer group. The volunteer group that's in this general area as, as we heard earlier from Sue Sutherland and, and Eugenia is focusing in on building the trail area. And, and that's all, cause that's all on the North end of Baker's uh, of the, uh, of the Creek there. So that's where their focus has been. And, and so as the, as the backwack committee, they're looking to, to, to the, because we've shown some interest here as the conservation commission, do you have people that you could focus in on this area? Uh, they've also gone, and that's what kind of you see Sydney Van Zant's name there. Is that uh, coordinate? You know, this coordinated this, this quarterly schedules. Uh, you know, water stream and water site cleanups. They've gone to GOSA through Sydney Van Zant to see. Do you have some of your stewardship 
people that would be able to support this. Gosa's response has been that I, I'm part of your team, but at this particular time, I'm focused on some of my other uh, projects here, um, such as at their sheep farm, because they just, that's newly, they have two newly acquired properties this year that they're trying to get up to, to, to their standards, particularly at the sheep farm and also at, at Dry Stack Drive. So they, that's where they're, they said, I'm not, I don't have any bodies to be available at this time. I, I will get back to you in the future. And as far as I, what my perspective is from the Conservation Commission is we have yet to establish a, a core group of volunteers to focus in and to go support them at this time. Uh, and I think we just have to, in, in, you know, are, are there other organizations we could go to such as Pfizer? Uh, I can tell you from GOSA's perspective, they went to Pfizer for, to help out on their sheep farm and Pfizer has turned them down due to COVID restrictions as far as on their support at this time. So at this time, I don't see us, I think we should be responding to say, we will we'll coordinate this as part of our stewardship plan. And when we get a, a core group together in the future, we will help to support this. But we are, we are not at that point in time and have no a group of volunteers ready to support you on a, a, a water side, a stream of water side cleanup at this time. Uh, Michelle. Yeah, hi. So I, I I think this is actually perfect because we can use this as our first test case on how to do this, how to get volunteers to do these things. So we have, you know, we have this long, long list, but here we have something that somebody actually, some other people have an interest in. So we put this to the top of our list of, of how we get um, volunteers to do this stuff and what to do with them and use that kind of to create our template for how it goes we got going forward that so so that so this we can use this as our test case for our discussion um next month the other thing i wanted to to add was that one of the groups of potential volunteers is a con college students because they have a community service thing and i and i know how to get to the person that that helps coordinate and what the students do for community service so if we have um if we've just outlined here's what they can do and and you know it's actually very specific here's the safety stuff here's whatever will it happen this fall no it's not happened this fall we're shut down right now because 10 percent of the population the student population has covid so so this would be planning now for when we do finally ha are able to have volunteers say in the spring if we start planning now we can be ready for a volunteer base in the spring so so i think this is great we just say you know we you know, we're going to put this to the top of our list of, of organizing volunteers and, and we'll work with, with them and with other people to figure out how to get these untrained volunteers, what we need to do with them to get them to help out with these kinds of properties. Tom? I, I appreciate that. Those are great ideas. I think you're right on. The only thing I would be advocating for you is that there are some nice warm days in the winter time that they could also <laughs> or and before we are, are up against spring break and that all that kind of right. stuff if, so, if, if we're ready time, warm winter time is also potential right if if our planning is ready at that point well the february late february early march is an ideal time to get out there before the leaves and all the stuff gets in your way well tom i think of that as kind of spring so yeah Anyway, it, it, those are fine points. The point is that that I think we can respond that yeah, we will we will work on this as part of our volunteer management process. Uh, so, volunteer so coordination what process. I, yeah, what I've heard is is that a response could be just what you said. A, we do have stewardship plans that address the Baker's Cove, which is the Birch Creek uh, plan. B, we have our approach is to work with RTM members to work out a sponsorship and, and be able to create volunteer teams, albeit we do not have any yet. Uh, Kathy Chase, I just looked it up. Kathy Chase is the one of the responders in District 1 for that area, right? So we kind of got a name uh, to work with. But um, we're, we're not ready yet because we're going through this process and we're going to be addressing even 
what an approach to create a volunteer organization is on our agenda next month right, right for discussion so that that kind of sounds like what i heard as a response does that does that make sense to you guys okay uh karen is our official back whack <laughs> representative <laughs> you kind of fell into that one um yep. Could you could you construct a response to uh, Michelle, the other Michelle? Um, uh, you know that that highlights those items. Yep. And I will. Uh, if you get more information, I'd be happy to you know review it for you. Two eyes are always better than four eyes, so I guess they're better than two. Absolutely. Um, whatever help I can do on that one, and that would be a response uh, to them. And it, I think you're right, Michelle. It does kind of fit in and gives us. A focus and the the Baker's Code and the Birch Creek is is a good place. It, you know, is a certainly a high value target, I guess, when you look at the value of the property. Uh, okay, so six forty one. So that completes. Unless anyone else has something else, that's what I had on the things to do on parcels, workbooks, stewardships, etc. Uh, does anyone, did I miss anything that anyone wants to uh, remind me of or bring up? Okay. So next was, now we're kind of getting into the uh, next thing on the agenda was objective uh, section seven. Hold on. Let me stop share there. Oops. And get rid of that. Doing a little screen screen management. So bear with me. Okay, so this is uh, I did updates on the action list. We did kind of talked about a lot of these things today. Um, so the list is actually getting shorter, guys. That's a good thing. This is a short-term one. So we choose to, at some point, we'll go to mid-range mid, mid, uh, uh, timing. Um, so I want to quickly go through here. Uh, oh, green belts, that it? Did we have, is that on the agenda? Oh, greenways, yeah, that's, that's coming up on the agenda. Perhaps we can handle that right here. Um, um, you had a meeting with uh, Barry on uh, submitting an application on greenways? Yes. Right. Uh, just to make it quick is that um, I, I, I had a discussion with Mark Barry by phone and by email uh, and what uh, to, to kind of get an update as far as on has Parks and Rec put together a, a, a another application because they did have the one back in, in 2018 or excuse me 2019 uh, that they applied for they took the whole green belt system threw a, that out, a letter on it and applied for uh, the whole a whole green belt to be a designated a greenway and and the state did not take any action on it and they have and they they and when I talked to the state about it uh, they have not uh, um, they have no record of it of uh, of what they action that they did with it, but we've and they said you whatever you do you have to reapply uh, next round uh, for uh, June of twenty uh, of twenty twenty two. So what I suggested to Mark says, hey, we have you know we've talked about greenways in our open space acquisition plan uh, as far as with a focus on trying to connect to, to Ledger and to New London and potentially Stonington. Uh, Stonington doesn't have a greenways right now, but they're, they have, we, in our discussions with them, uh, that they had th thought about something up in the Northeast uh, corner uh, uh, to link up with us. And, uh, and so what I did in, uh, and so what Mark suggested is that we bring this up at the, uh, at the Trails Task Force uh, and so uh, the next Trails Task Force is, is on Thursday of this week. It's on the agenda and that uh, we'll have a, uh, a, 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 and hopefully get 
a joint uh, agreement with GOSA, the Tritown Trail, Avalonia, as far as on what we should be at and with and from and the Grand Parks and Rec, as far as on a go ahead way, as far as what should we be focusing in on for the uh, for the for the uh, tri for uh, establishment of, of, of three potential green, uh, two or three greenways within the town. So uh, at this point, uh, the discussion is going to follow up and uh, we'll be. Is, is looking is focusing in on the on the on the on the revised uh, uh, green belts that we had approved in the conservation plan and focusing on which should be submitted for an application perspective as opens uh, for a, a, a formal state state of Connecticut greenway application with a focus on trying to link up uh, with Ledger uh, and uh, and New London. So more to follow uh, after, uh, the, but it is actually and I, if you want me to. Uh, uh, I have a proposed, I can show you the map that we're looking at if you want to me to share uh, the screen here. Uh, I can do that for you. But since it, but I, uh, you're sharing right now. Uh, All right. Or, or the thing is, given you're going to have a discussion this week, maybe we should put that on the agenda and review that next week, given the feedback you get. On the four October meeting, yes. As far as what what did the uh, task force uh, recommend? Right. Yeah. All right. Why don't Why don't we do that? But I, I've got the map standing by. If you want me to share it. Okay. I'm looking to see if anyone else has an overwhelming. In, okay. I don't. I don't see a a hand up, Tom. Okay, that's fine. We love you. But, but yeah. was, all right. Next one is is coming out later in three three Q. Uh, oh, this one just says, did that get, the, I always thought that got finished, that the, the merit, the, the bridge down there on the... The, the bridge, was, uh, here's an update on the bridge. The bridge is complete now. Uh, I, I went across it yesterday. Uh, I, you know, but it, there's still a sign, there's still four signs posted that says that the uh, trail is still under construction and the silt fencing is still around it at this time. But it, the bridge is fully complete. Uh, it, it, it's really nice. Uh, I think if you need a picture, I can get you a picture of it too, but uh, it's done. And I think what right now is that the silt fencing still needs to be taken down around the other projects around the school, like their playground, the baseball diamond, there's still silt fencing in those areas. And I think when that comes down, uh, then uh, you know the contractor hasn't finished up. They got the people who are in the school but they haven't finished up all the uh, outside things such as the yep. silt fencing and that type of stuff. So there's still workers uh, uh, to be finished up. And that when that comes down, then they'll probably take the signs down and get a full opening. I will also be bringing it up on the agenda for the Trails Task Force on Thursday as far as what their opening uh, uh, program is going to be, if there's going to be any type. I can also tell you that GOSA went in as part of the Crosstown Trail and did uh, clean up the trail. So it has easy access to it. Uh, from the uh, uh, Fishtown Road entrance. All right, good. Uh, oh, Bray. I, I just wanted to add uh, to Tom's comment that, yeah, it's a very impressive bridge. And I sent on to uh, Mark very, uh, some comments about improving the trail that on the contractor's uh, privy, he, he could do on the uh, school side of the stream stream bed and Mark was gonna look into that. So it, it's still in play. Uh, it's not totally ready for uh, prime time opening up, I think. Uh, and there is some definitely on the east side of, of the bridge, uh, some work that needs to be done on trail clearing and so forth. But it's a great bridge. <laughs> Reach to nowhere at the at the moment. No, no, it doesn't go nowhere. It goes right right across that 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 was messy. I got I used to get my boots messy on that uh, going across that creek. Um, all right, uh, just another three. I was going down. I would, the, the next one is seven point four point seven. That's the trails booklet. Last last week. Um, I had proposed a crowd sourced trails thing and you guys shot that down, which then put us right back into the us working with Parks and Rec on a trails booklet. So any any update on that, Bray? 
Uh, no, uh, the, the one item that I've been working on uh, involves the attorneys in regards to uh, Pequot Woods and uh, they've, uh, the attorneys for the town apparently have had a very busy summer with uh, other projects that have been taking their time. So I'm hoping that uh, I get back to them and get some progress moving on our end, uh, hopefully soon. All right. Um, let's see. The next one was, did we need a Breezy Knoll Drive open space plan? Uh, deferred to next meeting. A rep from Parks Rec and Gosa named. Um, oh, renamed Woodcrest. Okay, so we did that. We did go out. We did get a rep named in terms of pursuing that. Uh, so I'm not sure we've, I guess that puts it back into the execution phase at this point, right? We teeing it up, but we haven't, we haven't executed anything yet. Is that correct, Don? Uh, yes, I haven't done anything with this one. Yep. Okay. So I, it, again, it's, we're in this next phase, right? <laughs> right. To think, to plan, to the, to the stewardship plans and now into the execution and how we do that. Established volunteer open space. Well, we did talk about that today. That letter went out. Uh, utilize student support. You mentioned that again, Michelle. Uh, there, um, I'm going to talk in a little bit about the Yukon OPIM project. Uh, okay, so I think that's it for uh, that. So I'll, I need to update that uh, after this meeting. Objective seven. The next one, uh, 4.4, uh, legal language for unprotected parcels. Um, is it time where we should formally reach out to the town attorney, Tom, you think? Uh, I, with the history that, uh, that I've seen that we, the town attorney is gonna have to get involved here, uh, but, um, I, I personally think that they're still kind of tied up. You know, I don't have a clean, uh, the, the town, town, as Bray just said, the town attorneys are very busy at this time. It still may be pre premature to be going forward uh, I mean, at this time. We've got enough stuff for them, but uh, I just don't think that they have the time to look at it. The time for it, uh, yeah. So I would, I would say is, okay, maybe next month we actually put out a request for their time and let them tell us that they either have or do not have time, you know? Okay. Um, I can prepare uh, some to, uh, as far as for a memo. Yeah, for, ne for next, yeah, for next week, next we month meeting. Forward it, it to let everybody look at it for, for the October 4th meeting and then uh, and have uh, Bruce forward it through the official channels. All right, the uh, next item uh, on the agenda was all trails application. Didn't we just talk about that or is that a different? Just, yeah. I, I, yeah, I thought we talked about that already. Uh, all right, uh, 4-6, cannabis. So there's a uh, there's a zoning request and w one of the two list was us uh, about any feedback we had on the uh, cannabis uh, and somewhere in this mess I do have I think that was out there right mm -hmm. oh it's in the agenda uh, let's see what happened to the agenda uh, bu, bu, bu. There's the agenda. I think it's at the end. Bu, 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 bu. I go down. Uh, there it is. Page 34 in the agenda. Let me share that. Uh, 
Okay. So, uh, so there is a um, October twelfth public hearing um, on it, and basically the recommendation that was put out. Let me get that put back down, but this is just boilerplate here. Uh, oh, so the the definitions, by the way, was a producer, dispensary, cultivator, micro cultivator, retailer. Etc. So the thing that caught my eye was a cultivator or micro cultivator cultivator. And when you get down is they're basically saying they don't want anything. I mean, they're, they're saying is that we're not we we're proposing that we do not approve any cannabis establishment in any zone in the town. Um, I think from a conservation commission point of view, if you look over on the green districts, um, over here, where the X is saying it's it's prohibited, um, you know the rest of them I think is outside of our purview. But I certainly think that we would not want to have cannabis cultivated on things that are currently town open space properties or things in the green spaces. So, I, I mean, I think that's an easy one. But I'll throw it out there for um, any discussion or or. Uh, Yep, the hand up first was Tom. Right. I agree with you as far as on the cannabis establishment relative to cultivation in green districts. However, I'm torn here because from my review of the, uh, of the enacting language uh, from the state, uh, you know, from the, from the state law that went put in, put in place, it's SB 1201 is that there's an intention from the state is to fix problems by uh, allowing cannabis sales within the state. And this does, and this action that is, is across the board uh, is pretty draconian. And I think they need to have a much more surgical approach to what they don't want cannabis to be done within the town. Uh, listening to, in my personal opinion, listening to the, uh, uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, as they uh, uh, discuss this particular item, uh, in my view, they they uh, kind of took the easy way out uh, and just said, "Oh, we don't we don't know even understand the definition of municipality." There's four uh, four zoning uh, 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 commissions within the town. Uh, we should just you know to get together with these other guys. So in the meantime, we'll put this on the table as a, just a clear cut uh, uh, pro prohibition just prevent anything. Uh, and I kind of take objection with that personally, that we that this is an overreach on their part, because as a as a as one of the affected uh, impact areas within the state, uh, we do Groton is one of the impacted towns. And so as such, we would be a beneficiary of any of the sale, you know, the money that's caught generated through sales of cannabis within the town. And so in particularly in, in that area is, is, is in the census tract that includes the Midway Oval and that particular area all the way over to Electric Boat. And, you know, from, so, you know, taking this type of action, I think we, I, I pers personally feel that uh, we, we should, that this should be disapproved as the way it's proposed and that we recommend that, uh, that it, the only prohibition be uh, in, the, in the green areas uh, in the green districts. Uh, so that's how, what I would be recommending as, as an action uh, for us uh, to, to make it, you know, is commenting back to the, uh, to the, both the town council and the, uh, and the planning and zoning commission. And I don't know if the, you want a motion or other discussion at this time. I'll, I'll yield at this time. All right, let's, let's have some discussion, uh, Michelle. I, I, yeah, Tom, I don't know what you meant, what you mean by we're an impact area. What, what's the definition of that? The, the impact areas are set up by a, 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 a essentially a, a diversity and equity areas, but they feel that it's, 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 there's a, a council that ha, that's, was a set up by this bill back in July uh, by this, by, at the state level to look at every census tract in the state and say, was there a, <clears throat> well, let me see if I've got this stuff here is in regard to, what areas of the state 
were impacted by having a prohibition against uh, uh, marijuana. And did, mm -hmm. did that result in higher uh, uh, um, arrest <coughs> rates for, for drug usage and that type of stuff? And, uh, and uh, what I think in arrest rates? Yeah, there's a conviction rates uh, is 14%. And unemployment rate is seven percent. So this makes a uh, uh, Grand the release of the from from basically from Midway Oval all the way over to the to the uh, to the Thames River a, a disproportionately impacted area. And so so that the town could that, that then qualifies the town to be received the as the municipality with all four of the uh, 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 zoning areas that we would be able to receive funds from the sale of marijuana to offset the, this long-term okay. uh, uh, impact uh, to that area. And that by us, this, this, uh, we, we have it in our plan here, our conservation plan to open up to in this particular area matches up with, you know, making sure that they have, they, these type of areas have, the impacted areas have access to open space and other in such, uh, 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 social programs and so this, this you know we're not sending the right message here by saying we don't want cannabis uh in in Groton. it's 180 out from what the state's trying to do and and, and, and correct uh, action and we're not supportive of it thank you all right other uh comment michelle yeah so okay i understand it better now and that makes sense tom and I actually agree with you. The only the only issue I have is that's not really our ballpark, right? I mean, I'm not I as as a conservation commission, do we really have the you know, is it really up to us to say what they should be doing with everywhere else? We know we want to say no, we don't want the green open areas be you know, people planting marijuana there is what I'm thinking what we're saying. It's like we shouldn't be cultivating it in in the town's open spaces, but do we really is it really up to us to say anything about the other areas. Yeah, Bruce. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to give um, an update so everyone kind of understands, you know, where the planning department is going with this. So, so this law became effective um, July first, and, and what we're doing here is we're doing what, what we're seeing is we're doing a temporary prohibition of this. So right now. We don't have a good definition in our zoning regulations for a cannabis establishment or any, really any guidelines or codes on like on um, how they would be designed, where they would be placed, or how they would be regulated through the zoning regulations. So what we're doing and a lot of other towns are doing is we are prohibiting it temporarily. We consider this to be a temporary proposal. Um, Several members of the Planning and Zoning Commission are supportive of cannabis. Um, they just, you know, what we're really trying to do is just trying to, you know, slow it down, um, leave ourselves so we're not vulnerable right now for um, applications in residential districts and anywhere that we allow retail. Um, and, and then we're really going to take a closer look and a deep dive into it in the coming months here. And it's it's very likely that it would be allowed in several districts. Just really want to understand you know where they should be and what they should look like and really try to incorporate it into our regulations like we do with any other use i just wanted everyone to know you know this is you know where the planning and zoning commission isn't looking to prohibit this long term you know this is just kind of a, a temporary ban to kind of pause and figure it out and then um amend it as as necessary in a few months here bob the only reason I'm a little suspect of that statement as far as temporary is I took a look at the discussions because uh, that was discussed is should, we, should we put an end date on this and make this a temporary thing such as Preston did uh, last week and it was reported widely in the, in, the, in the New London Day here that they went for a, I think it's a one year period. Uh, and that was discussed. Uh, at the at the planning commission, I I listened to it, and but they they did not put a time limit on it because they felt it was they didn't know how long it would take, so they didn't put a time limit on it. And, and so the way it's written right now, there is no time limit, so it's essentially permanent from my viewpoint. Thank you. Well, all right, let let's back up a second. So I think there's 
couple of questions on the table. One is from a conservation commission charter and responsibility, I think we certainly have the right, I might be the or the authority or whatever you want to call it, to weigh in on green districts, right? Because that's that's certainly within our purview. Um, and um, I think what was proposed is, is that, yeah, we we want we don't we, we we want to restrict the cultivation of cannabis in green space in green districts, uh, which includes all the open space, et cetera, et cetera. The second that I mean, so that's one point. The second one that was brought up, or that Tom brought up, was, and he did say it is a personal view, which I kind of happen to agree with. But from a conservation commission point of view, you know, do we want to? weigh in on other zones uh, in regards to this particular topic. So let me pose that question to you guys um, in those two parts. First, do you agree that uh, we would want a permanent, um, <laughs> Tom just mentioned, a permanent prohibition on uh, cannabis sales and or cultivation in the green districts? I mean, so yes. let me put that for yes or no. So, so is that a, a yes. Quick, quick yes. Sense? Okay. So we all kind of a, a consensus agreement on that, right? I think where as it goes, without objection, that is so stated. So then the next question would be: Do you think it's within our authority, or should we weigh in on the other districts? So let me do a straw poll on yes or no. Yes, we should weigh in on cannabis in other districts, or no, we should not. So let's for the yes votes. Please raise your hand on should we, as a conservation commission, weigh in um, on that topic? So I have one. We have one. There's nothing to prohibit. To, oh, two. Two. I agree with with Tom. Okay, so we have two. So certainly it appears that there's not going to be a consensus if we did do, do a motion, Tom, to go that route. Now, as individuals within the town, we all have our right to go forward and make an input, you know, for the October 12th meeting. And I would suggest that from a conservation commission point of view, we respond formally uh, with what we just agreed to on the green districts and you know, perhaps indicate that, you know, that you guys can certainly go in and have your own feedback to that October 12th session. Is that, is that fair? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So I do happen to agree with you, by the way. I uh, so do I. Yeah, I do I just, too. I just, I, just <laughs> I, I think it's just not, it's just not in our, in our right. purview. Um, all right, so that's that one. No trades at the cannabis. All right, we're down to a report of chair. Um, so there were Larry, just before you get off of I saw, are you going to put a memo together in response to the memoranda that we received from the planning department, or is this just that we passed no, this? Uh, they, first? I, I will, I, I mean, mark that down. So I will put together a response from the commission, uh, re the green, the, the green uh, districts, all right? And I guess my point would be, you know, that one's permanent, all right? Forget, the, you know, whether there's not, I know there's no town, but to that point is we are, you know, it's, you can make that permanent and you could stay, hey, the other stuff they can put a time limit on, but just not the green districts. Um, all right, so, all right, so one of the items, um, and it came up, and I, it, we kind of touched on it. Uh, John Bird asked if we had any candidates in districts two and three, which are those on the west side of town, for open space because it's a little light there. So I did take our listings. I did identify which ones are in district two and three, which were thin and small. Um, and I forwarded them to him. I said, hey, here's the stuff we looked at. 
uh, he said, thanks, you know, I'll look at it. I've not heard back from him. Uh, but there's not a lot of, um, I mean, that includes the city, right? So there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of open space candidates, uh, you know, in that area. Uh, you go to the north a bit and it, it, it opens up, but not, not in that southern, southwestern portion of the town. So I just wanted to let you know that that was out there that there was i mean the good news is that's an interest in having more open space but mm -hmm. being more i guess targeted uh, towards the areas that are light on open space um so i i my own view is since we don't have anything specific to pursue unless somebody wants to dig through the list and, and bring up something to pursue is to let the town come back and you know maybe provide some examples or options and that we could weigh in on um so that's more of information uh, item um on the uh opa at, well, let me oh, let me get rid of this hold on uh, stop share so let me then share i got something else here oops wrong one uh, share OPM, OPIM. Okay. So this was this was a Yukon uh, program where the students were working on stuff. So I did I did um, have a discussion with John Burt on is there topics or candidates for from his perspective and the town council perspective that might be uh, useful for, you know, round two, you know, that, that kind of cleaned up the model. Um, one of the things he mentioned was, uh, I guess the short form is trees, <laughs> um, that he felt that they had a difficult time rationalizing uh, what tree coverage meant how to sell the fact that they need to maintain tree coverage, that there was, I guess, debates, et cetera, and discussions, you know, in the town council. And was there something that we could do to uh, address that issue? Um, and it is one of the things that was only lightly covered in the, in the modeling itself. Uh, it didn't really distinguish between old and new, it's a, or the age of the tree, age of the individual trees, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I thought about that and I put together this, which I sent up to the Yukon um, project lead to say, hey, what do you think? Uh, you know, just, just, I haven't put it through my Michelle review. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, I said, ah, I wasn't going to waste your time if you didn't think it was, wasn't appropriate. Uh, but I did get uh, feedback late last week that says, well, okay, they're, they're interested. So I think I might have to lean on you, Michelle, again, for how to properly write a, uh, I guess his mission statement is the wrong thing, but, uh, um, help me out here. They're, an, uh, an abstract for, right. for the project, project. For the project. Yeah, the project outline or whatever. Yeah. yeah, whatever. So I think I think uh, after today's meeting, assuming that you know that we think this is not a bad thing to do, uh, is to reach out to you and do what we did last time is to kind of help structure and refine the actual text. Um, so I I divided into two parts. Uh, one was to improve the model, which was kind of an out an outgrowth from the last one. They did make a suggestion how to improve, how to measure or quantify the benefits of tree canopy, although they didn't actually put it in the model. So I did kind of feedback back then. I said, thanks for the recommendation, but you didn't, you didn't give me anything, right? Other than a recommendation. So that was the first part. The second part was more of, how do you explain this to people? Right? Or what is a an urban uh, you know, carbon sequestration policy and or strategy within the town? And the point of that was to say there's the technical side 
and then there's the business um, right. positioning side. And that's what caught the interest was not, you know, with the other take the two teams to put them together, the techie guys and, and you know, and the business folks that have to deal with, uh, you know, how do you sell this? Because that's how I, in the verbal that I did when I gave them this was, you know, how do you sell this to people? Right. Um, because it's not immediate, obvious, obviously, it's not immediately obvious to folks. And given everything gets, I hate to say, it gets politicized on everything is, you know, how to, as much as you can depoliticize it with, with facts as best we can. So that's what, that was the level of interest, um, I guess, was the twofer uh, in there. Tom, uh, you have your hand up. Yeah, a couple of things here. One, I got involved a lot of this in writing up the, our section of the of the open space uh, acquisition plans. There's a lot of talk. I, I spent a lot of time on this in, in, for the words that we used in our plan. But additionally, I don't know if you're aware, of, but over the month of October, um, the uh, it's the there's going to be a right trees for the right time online workshop with forestry uh, resource managers, land trust members, landowners. Gather your team and register for the uh, New England uh, uh, Forest and October workshop uh, through the Long Island Sound Study uh, Fund grant led by the University of Connecticut Sea Grant Program in collaboration with the Avalonia Land Conservancy and the Northern Institute of Applied Climate Sciences. There is a four-part program that they're going to have. It's part of its virtual, and there's also includes a two-hour trip to a local forest to apply the principles that you're going to be learning about. Uh, in regard to how do you, vet, I think it's trying to answer the type of questions you're, how do you build up and hmm. quantify things? So uh, in the sessions are October 1st, 8th, and then uh, the uh, 16th and the 22nd. So I don't know if, if we need to get some participation in this. It's it's all free. So um, I just point that right. out. Uh, the, the, could, you, the, could you could you send me that that link, Tom? Yeah, I will. All right, because then then it kind of fits in its Yukon. It kind of fits back to yeah. this, you're right this topic, and kind of ties in another area of the of the uh, Yukon uh, body politic, if you will, in in general. Um, so uh, I guess my questions are number one: uh, Are you guys in general support uh, of this being OPIM project number two being mm -hmm. sponsored by the Conservation Commission? Yes. 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 Sure. All right. So, so I'll do that with uh, as a, the, the right term. I don't even need, I, I won't need a motion. It's just uh, without objection. Uh, I'll continue to pursue this. I mean, it's, again, we're in the process of, I got to think I have a meeting. Oh, tomorrow. I have a meeting tomorrow on this, um, this topic, uh, just to kind of move it along. So it, it, it is going to come up in later this year it would be when, so I don't know if it's the spring semester. Mm. Uh, we'll see what happens on, on how this progresses. Uh, but I think that that session you mentioned, Tom, you know, fits in really nice. Uh, yep. mm -hmm. I, I, this, this has been kind of an ongoing thing. This is really the first time that they're going to try to talk a little bit more. I've been to two other sessions or th two or three other sessions back this past uh, fall and, and over the winter uh, where they where this, this same group has been doing this. And they've been bringing it in for people how. There's been more on forest management focus. This is the first time I've seen them to really take a look at, at how do you do outreach and that type of stuff. Um, so. Okay, good. Uh, the is last it, item I had under, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, if you need me to help tomorrow, I don't know what time your meeting is, but I may be able to assist you on that if you need any assistance on it. They're, yeah. they're looking for me to, to pay for this time. So are, are you coming with money? Oh. <laughs> I was, I was, I was, I was talking about funding this. So oh. I, I don't think you want to join me in this meeting. No. Okay. <laughs> Maybe at a future one, right? Okay. But, but yes, go ahead, Michelle. Yeah. Tom, can you include me with that link? Cause I, I have one from back in June that, that I started looking at right to you for the right time, but I don't see anything for October. So can you forward that information to me as well? 
And, and can you forward it to me as well, Tom? How about having Larry just send it out to everybody or Bruce? <laughs> I'd like to too. Bruce, can you send it out to us? <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Sure. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, what was it? Now I lost. Oh, I, I remember. All right. So, so the last item I had on reported chair was Bray approached me over, I don't remember what it was, uh, a, a number of days ago about um, is it time to address merging the city of Groton and the town conservation commission. So I thought it was uh, an interesting topic. So let me turn the floor over to Bray to expound upon that thought. My thought was that conservation issues over the years in the city of Groton have not had much daylight shine on them. The town of Groton Conservation Commission that we're all members of have always had a representative or two from the city of Groton. So we've had people who live throughout the town, including the city. And so from my years on the Conservation Commission, I considered the city as part of the town and therefore we're all one. I've known people on the Conservation Commission and the inland wetland in the town of, I'm sorry, the city of Groton over the years who have strong conservation attributes, but there hasn't, they've only dealt really with inland wetland issues. And the thought is that much like the education department in the town of Groton includes the city, why not do the same thing with conservation? Uh, because conservation obviously doesn't know any uh, political boundaries, boundary lines, and so forth. That the thought is of uh, art combining and if they want to have a caveat to say that uh, within on our commission, uh, one of our positions is somebody from the city that lives in the city. Uh, I, I think that would be certainly a, a good discussion point. But uh, Tom has had an opportunity to actually sit down in some of those meetings with them. And I think that we could do a better job as we look at the whole area of managing conservation for the entire town, if we could also include the city. Uh, because right now, in my experiences in the past, uh, the city wants to be part of the town, but the city doesn't want the town to be part of them. And I think we need to get over that. And I think that with the expertise we have on Conservation Commission now, uh, it would certainly be a, a benefit to the city of Groton and in their conservation plan. So that's right. just, that's just, just to confirm. I think Michelle, you live in the city, right? Right. So and, yeah. So I'm I'm just trying to understand what it would look like because, and I again, I think they meet at a time when I can't be with them, which is why Tom's been the one representing us. But um, but they also do the wetlands and stuff, and we would we be taking that on, or would they separate out their wetlands and just have us look at the the conservation issue? I mean, what? How do you envision that, Bray? I envision it as a separation. Okay. Uh, one of the uh, Khaki WIC, the uh, Connecticut Association of Conservation and Inland Wetland Groups that we've argued over the years is that a lot of towns have grouped these things together. And uh, much like now we have zoning and planning have now uh, joined as, as one unit, which means one of the areas does not get the attention that it used to. And uh, whichever the, with the strength of the people that are on the board, they want to talk planning, do they want to talk zoning, and that's sort of the direction they go in. So I'm, 
uh, I'm not proposing that we take over any of their inland wetland uh, attributes. It's just their co conservation, which is only advisory. So it's not as though we're taking away any power structure, if you will, that, uh, that inland wetlands has. Okay, so I, I agree with that. My next question would be, how would it work? How would, how would this actually happen? Good question. That uh, the uh, this, the city uh, conserv inland wetlands and conservation inland wetlands commission uh, would have to be addressed and to see if they have any what their feelings are because if they're not interested in it at all, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, Bob. Yeah, I hear what Bray's saying. I have asked the question. You know, I, I had the same thoughts myself at one time, uh, but I think a lot of this is, you, know, you talk about the political side of it is, is gonna overwhelm us real quickly. Uh, if anything, it would be a discussion, you know, as far as for the execution, it would be a discussion between uh, the mayor of the city and the town manager from Groton, because that's who we report to. Uh, and maybe the thing to do here is to have Larry ask Bert when the next time his he has his discussions with the uh, with the mayor is is are they is he interested in getting you know giving up because that's who it's really going to boil down to is that the mayor has to give up something here to give to Bert uh, as far as the you know, oversee because we report to to the town manager and so and and likewise the 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 conservation commission for the city reports to the mayor. Um, and so that's really where that discussion needs to happen. Uh, and I think at this point, they, they, you know, they freely admitted to me when I had my discuss. you know, the, the one, I've been to two of their meetings, but the one I, that I was actually on the agenda to present, we had discussion and, uh, and they freely admitted that they are 99% inland wetlands and that they're really not doing anything, uh, on a, a recurring basis. And they did not respond to any of the stuff that we sent to them, you know, like the, the drafts for the open space plan and that type of thing. But I think from the mayor's perspective, the mayor has been very um, supportive of, of, of BACWAC. He actually attends the yeah, meeting. He attends every meeting. Right, so he's kind of acting as, uh, as the Conservation Commission representative uh, to, to that for the city. So I'd say, you know, from my viewpoint, <laughs> that if the mayor has questions, he's going to rely on his um, uh, conservation commission to get involved if he feels they need to be. But I think he has a, a, a very, um, po you know, a personal commitment to it. And I think it would be to some degree almost offensive to say that we want to take that away from him. And you got to talk to us as opposed to the, your, your town uh, uh, group that's been well established over the years. That's my personal opinion, uh, how I see how this would play, because unless we're, we, there's some massive thing, because I, I would say the same thing for Groton Long Point, is when I go down and talk to them, their conservation commission, again, because we have three conservation commissions in the, in, in, in the Groton area here, they look at themselves as overseeing the, the conservation areas within Groton Long Point. And stewards of that of those parcels uh, down there. There's there's over a hundred acres of stuff that they're they're worrying about down there uh, as a, a, you know as the stewards of, of that. And you know and and, Gr and Groton City has some conservation areas established there right next to Sparkle Lake and that type of stuff. And I think that they look at that the, they're the, the stewards of that. Uh, so you know for us to go in and you know do anything and we can have that discussion and have. Ask Mr. Burke to talk to in, in, in on an informal basis with the mayor, but that's about all I would you know recommend at this time. I don't think there's anything overtly that we should be doing as a commission to as a what would be perceived to some by some folks as a power grab. Other comments? Just a, a quick follow up to Tom's comments. Um, I'd like to think my glass is half full on this one, but I'm not taking it, thinking of it as a power grab. I know that over the years we've had communications 
with uh, the city of Groton that oftentimes went through somebody like uh, Bruce, a representative from the planning department, the town's planning department would go to a representative at, at the city and, and to filter it down and so forth. And um, oftentimes we wouldn't hear any feedback. And then all of a sudden we get a question to us to say, uh, what do we think about additional open spaces in the city of Groton? Well, it's, it's not high on our list because we really don't have uh, sort of any jurisdiction to speak of uh, to take a look at those sorts of things. And as far as the sort of looking at uh, Groton Long Point and their conservation commission, one of the members I believe currently on their commission used to be a long-term member of the Groton Conservation Commission. So we had a, a person who actually lived at Groton Long Point who's very much aware of the Conservation Commission on Groton Long Point, on our commission. And so there was a bridge between those two and felt like there was an open communications back and forth. And I never really felt that with the city of Groton. That I, and I, I agree with Tom that unfortunately uh, the mayor may feel that it's a power grab and not see any benefits uh, that I think would come out of all this. But it's, I'd like to see, uh, you know, it's in, in a sense, if people are positive on it and maybe it's something we can just start to put out some feelers and just see where it goes. All right, as, as this thing would uh, shake out, it does, to me, it would seem that there's additional workload on us. So we would have to present more formally to the city council and and or the mayor, you know, not just the town. So I would just be cognizant of that. So there is, it's not a zero uh, impact on us. I think, you know, the way to proceed is, is that what's the sense of the commission uh, to, exp let me use the word explore, um that that concept of uh more directly supporting the city or not um so yes or no should we explore more oh michelle you don't count you're the city <laughs> i don't want to affect it the most yeah okay <laughs> uh okay so I, I see one yes all right uh, bray i assume it was two yeses from you Three, Ann? Mm -hmm. So that's three. Karen. Whoa, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, Karen, oh, four. All right, well, that kind of, that puts it, that puts it to the majority. Um, I would say that uh, maybe low, low ball? No, low, low key approach. I don't know why I said low ball. Low key approach would be I would reach out to, I think as Tom suggested, reach out to, to Bert and say, oh, by the way, in effect, I keyed on, on what he asked me about what do we do on the west side of the town? Well, the city's in the west side of the town. Right. Uh, to, to, just, to just have that as a side discussion the next time he has a chat with the mayor. So, um, yeah, I guess we show. So, so I, I think what it might be helpful too is is for us to maybe discuss what it would mean for us to take it over it's like what what exactly you know would it be making you know stewardship plans for the open space in the city like what what would it look like for us to actually do that and then say if we if we did this here's what it would mean because i don't have a really good feel for exactly what it would mean for us to to actually do this so maybe well, we need to talk point. about that first. Yep. And, and I, I'm not sure I would want to use the word takeover or anything like well, that. Well, whatever word you, well, first it's we got to pick the support. word we want to use. Improve yeah. the so, support, yeah, improve right. the support of the city, yes. Yeah. Right, so what what are we actually offering them by, by suggesting this? Okay, can I make a suggestion then? Uh, would you and Bray form a subcommittee? I mean, you could add one more member if somebody wants to volunteer. 
I, I would say Tom says he's talked to them before. <laughs> I, I, to, I have to, no to, idea, to, honestly. To play, no, no, just to flesh out. You're right. I think it's a valid question. Says, so what the hell would that mean? Would be a, an obvious first question back. Um, and we would need to arm, uh, you know, John with, you know, it's like three bullet points. We're not talking about a detailed plan. That's like not that more than I would even want to do. It more like be two or three bullet points or four bullet points. And what does that mean? How does this help the city? Would yeah. be the context of the response, right? Right. Um, so you you would you two be willing to uh, put that, you know, put those bullet points together, and I would, I would provide the communication to, uh, to John. Yes, Mr. Olson. But since I got asked to, by Michelle to be part of this, I'll do that. <laughs> okay. All right. I didn't ask. Right? That was Michelle asked. I asked him enough to do enough. All right. So that would be uh, Michelle Bray and Tom is what is, I'll list it as the benefit to the city for the Conservation Commission to support, directly support the city. All right, uh, I will wait for that uh, feedback before I reach out to John because I think he would need to have that information uh, you know, prior to any side discussion. All right, that, that concludes my laundry list. 737, well, not as good as last week, this month, but better than history. The report of staff is the, the uh, last item on the agenda. Mr. Lochran. Thank you. Um, I don't have anything else to add. <laughs> <laughs> so the very last thing on the agenda is the uh, is the motion to adjourn. Nobody wants to make a motion to adjourn. Well, I'll make a motion, motion to adjourn. <laughs> a second. We're gonna let somebody else do it for a change. <laughs> okay. And and has has all right. Uh, all in favor? All right. We unanimously agreed to adjourn. So uh, good, good meeting, guys. We're we're making progress on things. Uh, look for oh my God, it's October. Is our next? Oh, yeah, don't even go there. I know. Maybe Bruce. Maybe that potential of meeting in person. I don't, I haven't heard anything like that. <laughs> I will. I will keep, I'll, you'll hear as soon as I do. <laughs> All right. I ask them that every time we, we meet for our agenda discussion. They said, can we? <laughs> yeah, and I ask every uh, time before this meeting. <laughs> so. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone.